Welcome to the show, Nelson. How are you? I'm fine. Glad to be here. So I find you have a particular interest in labor history. Mm -hmm. And the best place I always like to start an interview is in the beginning. How did you get into labor history? Like, what was the journey to get there to actually study this? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, I do remember being interested in uh, some of the famous uh, big strikes of the 30s when I was a kid. I wasn't from a, a red diaper baby family, i.e. my parents weren't communists. Uh, I, don't, I don't say uh, <laughs> but they were they were kind of liberals um, in in kind of Maryland. Uh, um, uh, one was one. They were both refugees. My mother was a refugee from Mississippi. Uh, she found that uh, he was white, but she found it absolutely oppressive. And my father was a refugee from from Nazi Germany. So anyway, they got together. Um, I think I was. I, I really. I came out of the New Left. I, I, I was. I went to Berkeley in grad school uh, in the during the heyday of the New Left. Uh, and we, you know, there was a thing there called the the. You know the turn to the working class. That is when when um, uh, all of my comrades and friends, and not all of them, but a lot of them, uh, really we decided to get take industrial jobs um, in the Midwest. Uh, and uh, a lot of people I knew spent anywhere from three years to thirty years in in Detroit or Chicago. Now I didn't do that. Uh, I, I did want to be an academic, but but that was a powerful experience for me in the New Left in, at Berkeley in social movements. Uh, in, in I mean, I was a big supporter of the farm workers. I, I you know, and so that was that was a, a very formative moment. I, I remember going down to the also to the General Motors plant near in Fremont and supporting the workers there. So that that was a powerful moment for me, and uh, I, I decided to uh, I've been to write about the, the history of labor. Oh, that's fascinating. I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit lost. Um, I'm a sucker for terms, and, and I, I don't believe I've ever heard the, the phrase the new left, and I don't know what that is. Could you kind of explain that to me? <laughs> well, you know, the new left, of course, the students and the, the people who are against the Vietnam War uh, coming out of the civil rights moment. Um, I guess you we, you wouldn't call Martin Luther King a new leftist. That's true. But but a lot of his um, uh, people who followed him and, and, and were younger, uh, you know, th th it was a, a, a left that was it was not identified with the left of the 30s. Which was often communist. It was uh, non-communist, not anti-com, non-communist. But you know, the students um, uh, at first, students later on, lots of people were new leftists. Uh, Bernie Sanders. I mean, that's where he came from. He was a new leftist. He was a, a student in the '60s, and we were looking. We were we were radicals, and. Um, and and I it, 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 you know not in, in the Hollywood sense it, it wasn't like in the Hollywood sense we all got more mature and became conservative no I think lots and lots of people who were started off in their, as a new leftist at age twenty two remained a new le remained a leftist anyway for for decades and decades and decades and I I have friends who who really the long haul they spent. They spent, they were they were in in the factories and in in the in in, in, the, in the Midwest for many for a long time and they did a lot of good work too. That's 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 fascinating. So uh, one of the things that I I'm when we we spoke on the phone before this that I kind of wanted to get into right is is I feel like labor history is something it's overshadowed and. I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. You're the expert here. When I when I start thinking about labor history and 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 people like really standing up for you know fair pay, some some types of benefits and and and, and better working conditions, I think of you know, my mind goes back to right after the American Civil War. Right, you had we have this 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 pressing need as as Americans to combine the east and the west through r railroads and and that's 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 that that type of expansions feeling industry so you have your coal mines and whatnot and then and then my mind jumps to like virginia coal miners rights these strikes and and one of the things that i don't know enough about unfortunately but i'd love and i hopefully you do like do you know a little bit about the in the the things that led up to the Battle of, of Blair Mountain. Do you know anything about the historical timeline? Because I, I talk, I've talked to a lot of my friends about this, and they have no idea that there was a full-scale, pretty much, war going on um, at this period. And I believe it was in the 20s, about 1921, that this was going on. And I was wondering if you could kind of shed some light on that for our listeners. 
Sure. I, I think Ian, your, your, your impression that you offered is right. Is right. That is the impression. Uh, kind of, I think, yes. I think like a, uh, just a kind of almost uh, without too much thinking about it. Yes, we think labor history. Oh, yeah. Industrial workers in the 19th century, uh, coal miners and steel workers and railroads. And, and then maybe we think about some violent clash. I think that that is the image we have. Now, now I, there's much to be said about that. And I want to mention Blair Mountain because it says a lot. Uh, I'll mention that. But I do think that, that that's that's a sort of, okay, male men, white men, um, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, burly. Uh, I think that's the, that's the impression. I think, and I think you're right. I think that's, that's a that's a misimpression, obviously, today when most of the people who work and, and certainly those who are blue collar or pink collar or gray collar workers are are both immigrants and, and women and people of color. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the working class is, is not a, not a bunch of uh, of uh, coal miners or steel workers anymore. I, I would say that, that Trump in his in his efforts to identify with, you know, like West Virginia coal miners, he he would round up the few he could find and bring him into the Oval Office. And I think he was he wanted to reinforce that impression that the, the working class are a bunch of white guys, you know, who chew tobacco and and you know and 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 hang out in, in rural West Virginia okay uh, th that's obviously again I mean, that's just not the case today it's a very different world but um, but no but 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 some of the th the fights, the the conflict, the 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 issues of the late nineteenth century are very much with us today. I mean, capitalism generates inequalities. Uh, uh, the, the effort to have collective action on behalf of of a working group, whether it's Starbucks workers or coal miners in 1921, uh, you know, is can be resisted by the state, or the state certainly can be unfriendly about that. And, uh, you know, so I think that, that there are things that are, that are, that are similar. Now, with the Blair Mountain was, what was, in West Virginia was a, um, uh, I mean, what, here was a absolute cockpit of class conflict. Uh, the, the state was run by uh, the railroad magnets and 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 their coal mining uh, sort of offspring. Um, uh, the southern West Virginia, which is where Blair Mountain is, was was a was a, a low wage um, uh, repressive area. Uh, it was undercutting the the standards for coal mining and coal mining in those days employed a, a six hundred thousand workers and and was a kind of one of the second or third biggest entries industries in the country. So it was a vital. It was it was it was like the 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 Silicon Valley of today. It was it was a very important uh, industry. And the and in southern West Virginia, they, they, they were they were the, the coal miners formed the United Mine Workers. They also formed more radical groups. Uh, as well, and given the, the the and the 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 coal mine operators brought in the Pinkertons, which were a kind of hired band of, of strike breaking thugs. Um, the turned out in at Blair Mountain, the one of the sheriffs uh, in was actually on the side of the of the, um, the the miners. The interesting thing was that the sometimes local officials sided with the working class in in the 19th century, early 20th century. Sometimes today as well, um, there was actually a, a shooting out uh, uh, in, 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 in Southern West between the sheriff and the Pinkertons. A anyway, um, the, 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 uh, there was a, a um, what, what happened was that the, the uh, uh, Blair Mountain stood between um, uh, an area of, of strong union strength and, and an area where the, the Pinkertons and the anti-union forces were, were strong and, and, and there were coal mines there. And in order to have an effective strike, you know, you have to shut down the, 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 the industry everywhere. So the, 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 uh, the workers decided to sort of march march over Blair Mountain, and in the process, the uh, the uh, governor of the state and and the local um, uh, coal mine operators called on the U.S. government to send in you know the Air Force and 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 uh, armed armed uh, and troops, and it was a pitched battle between the the coal miners and the U.S. Army for a for a while there. Well, naturally, I mean you, you know when that happens, the, the army is going to win, uh, but uh, it was a notable moment of, of an incre incredible working class militancy in this period. Um, uh, now, I, I, let me say one more thing. It's a century 
year ago. West Virginia today, this just this is how that organized labor. West Virginia, eventually, a, a, the United Mine Workers did become a powerful union in West Virginia in the 30s, steel workers too. And, and West Virginia became a union state, and it was a powerful, you know, pro union uh, working class there uh, for, 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 from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, etc., 80s. Uh, West Virginia was a solidly Democratic state. It sent, uh, uh, so, you know, some some very some progressive people to to the, to Washington. Um, even Jay Rockefeller, uh, you know, of the Rockefeller, you know, wealthy. He was a uh, he was a senator from West Virginia, but he was a liberal. He was a liberal. Well, what happened in the last 40 years in West Virginia, 30, 40 years, is it became radically de-unionized. Uh, the mine workers, basically partly because the industry was evaporating and also because uh, there were anti-union uh, and uh, hostility to the union. To the union. So the, the most, almost all coal that's still mined in West Virginia is non-union. The steel workers, uh, you know, the steel works closed down. The same too with, the, uh, with chemical. The biggest employer in West Virginia is Walmart. So now West Virginia is one of the most non-union states, and so naturally you get conservatives, uh, uh, you know, and you get and Manchin is sort of hanging on by his fingernails, <laughs> a kind of a more conservative Democrat, uh, you know, and and so one of so this is one of the lessons of of unionism and non-unionism. You you really can't have liberals without a strong union movement. What, well, and what makes you what makes you say that? Um, you can't have liberals without a without a strong union movement. Okay, that's yes. I mean, you can have you know. Yeah, I mean, not to say there aren't liberals running around or, you know, uh, in 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 uh, in, in um, lots of places, uh, even in Texas. But what unions do is they change consciousness. Uh, I mean, it's one thing for people like me. Professor, maybe for you, for you, you're in the news business, and you know you you read and stuff to be you know to formulate your ideas. But for most working people, you know, you're trying to pay the mortgage, you're raising kids, you're you know you're living paycheck to paycheck. Um, you 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 know, you you will you will the, the world will will be seemed sort of chaotic and unorganized in the absence of an organization. Now you can have the church. You know that's important. Uh, that's churches vary between liberal, conservative, etc. You can have the church. Lots of people go to the church, or you can, you know, you can have your Rotary Club or something. Uh, but a trade union is one institution that brings people together collectively uh, to fight in their interest and to show them that they that if they want to win, they have to do it. Together, together. And that, I think, putting aside any money that a union might give to a candidate or even any leaflet or, or you know, speech somebody might give to the membership to say we should vote so-and-so, the very act of working together collectively on your own behalf – I think it's educational in the most profound sense, and it teaches you things about doing things together. And if that's the case, I think the appeal of a kind of right-wing, whether it's libertarianism or, or racism, well, I should say also, of course, unions to these days, especially these days, really, um, are, are, are the most multi racial, mostly multicultural institutions in America, far more than churches, that's for sure, which are, you know. So um, uh, for ordinary working people uh, who can't, don't read the New York Times or don't listen to, I don't know, your favorite liberal station, uh, a union is an educational, just the very act of being in a union is, is, is consciousness changing. And the fact that there aren't unions anymore in lots of places means that experience isn't there um so i could go on about that and i and but uh I mean, i'll just give one example if you take a take a take something like ohio uh you take a a a, a say a, a a white blue collar um you know warehouse worker in ohio male well if he's the statistics are if they're in a union the same thing white male blue collar warehouse worker, they're likely to vote 
liberal about 10 or 15 points more than if you're the exact same demographics, white, you know, male, uh, you know, than if you aren't. I mean, that, because just, just, the, just the process of, of thinking collectively. And uh, the left, you know, f functions in a more collective fashion. And then even the Democratic Party, which is not so, so great all the time, but nevertheless, you know, if you're thinking about national health insurance or something of that sort, you're thinking collectively. Yeah, I think that... I, d I think that I've always found that the duality of the United States as one of the most individualistic cultures on the planet, right? And yet we do have a large segment of it that is very, like, collectivistic and liberal. I, I'm, I'm kind of a weird cat uh, when it comes to, you know, that line of thing. I like both sides. I like the chaos. I like... I like the people that are on the right that are, you know, all about personal rights and, and, and I don't know. Yeah, but I'm just going to say personal rights, liberty, all that stuff, the don't tread on me dudes. We all know who you are. I like those guys. I also like the liberals. And I like that we kind of argue back and forth amongst each other and trying to make the, the best decision. I'm, I'm kind of right smack in the, li in the middle slash, like, I mean, I, I'm definitely more libertarian leaning, although they're insane as well. But that's kind of the, the one thing that I, I, I align with, I think, the most. Um, it's just leave me alone type, type deal. But <clears throat> I, I, I think when I think of someone that's blue collar, I generally think of them as someone that I know. I have friends that are in unions and they're deeply, deeply conservative, which I always thought was a little bit strange. And I kind of feel like that is maybe the direction the union unions are, sh are are shifting. Like I was wondering if you if I get your thoughts on that. Uh, two things, actually. To be a individualist, oh yeah, the, the 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 line, oh yeah, Americans are individualists. Here's the thing: if you work for a boss, uh, and most people do, uh, they work for someone else. Uh, your capacity to be an individualist is uh, greatly constrained uh, by the fact that eight hours a day or some large segment of the day, you have to essentially do what the boss tells you. <laughs> and uh, you have to conform to what your employer wants you to do, even if you find it unjust or whatever it is. Being in a union gives you uh, a, it backstops you. It gives you a sense of uh, security so that you can express yourself individually and you will not be penalized for it. So the collective, the action of co collectively getting together and forming a, a institution that can counter the boss's will actually makes for greater individual, individualism among its members. They can choose to do what they want, they to you know within within limits. They they, they, they don't feel what is the, what is the most oppressive and conformist thing. If you are fearful that the boss won't like what you do, then you will try as desperately to conform to his or her wishes. Uh, so so I, it was not even ironic. The the I always say this. Um, the law, why do we have, in every, every courthouse, we have a, the law will set you free. What is the law? The law is a series of rules. The law is a series of, of procedures because, but then, but they're in stone because they, they, they give you, uh, you know what you can be you, uh, certain, what you have, what, what to do, you have your rights and you can express them. The same is true of, of a union. It creates power which backstops your, your individualistic sense of what you want to do with it within, of course, a certain, certain limits. Um, uh, but it means, it means, and then, and, and, and the worst thing about, about, uh, for, for your sense of self worth, and it is is to be fearful. Then you will cower and 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 do whatever you can to 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 make the boss, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you you'll try to you know make him your friend. It's utterly undignified and and demeaning. Now you mentioned oh the other thing about conservative. Yeah, well I think I think here again I I, I the 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 one of the things that conservatives have done oddly enough remarkably enough is to make the argument. 
that unions are conservative, <laughs> that they are, you know, kind of um, stolid, uh, unimaginative, uh, and, and and hostile to to innovation and etc. Um, and then also, and even even today, even today, the uh, conservative group, the National Right to Work Committee, it's a very conservative element. They they make the argument that unions are, you know, hostile to uh, women. Uh, and racial minorities. Um, uh, I mean, that that's, that's there have been times, and I can give you many examples when that was the, that might have been true, but it's not true today. Uh, we, we've come through a long, we've had a lot of water under that dam, under that bridge. And, uh, and today, one of the things that for the last 25 years, trade unions has ba- have basically stood on the left side of American politics. That hasn't always been the truth. Back in the Vietnam War, one, back in the one, one reason I became interested in labor uh, uh, 50 years ago was because I thought the trade union movement was too conservative. It was in supporting the Vietnam War. It was not in favor of civil rights uh, as it should be. Uh, it was terrible on women. It was horrible on gays. Uh, so uh, that was one of the motivations that I had um, to change to change it, not not just to to be identified with it. But today, I think uh, uh, the union movement is in favor of immigration. Uh, it's in favor of LGBTQ rights. It's it, it, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, in favor of women's rights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I could, and I think it's moved it's moved to the left. How many how many unions are there in the United States? Oh, think? there there are many. Well, you're definitely okay. If it comes to local unions, you know, like say the, have you been following the Starbucks events? You know, I ha- I, I've I been following it from a distance, but if yeah. you, I know that there's a lot of people listening to this that haven't, so if you can kind of fill yeah. us in, we'd love that. Well, the Starbucks uh, uh, it is, has 9,000 <laughs> stores that, that are directly owned by the company, uh, and uh, several hundred of them, are, you know, have the, 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 the workers, the young workers, 20 or 30 of them per Starbucks, You've been into a Starbucks, you know. Uh, they have been uh, uh, ha- having elections and forming uh, uh, unions, and and so if if you count the the local union, the the the, the Starbucks union in in you know in in one store in Portland, uh, you know, or or one you know the corner, of, you know, one the store in, in the in, in uh, Capital in Maine in, in, in Los Angeles, it's a local union. So in that sense, we have 100,000 local unions in America, a little tiny, some are very small, 50, 20, you know, some are larger. Now, those little local unions are often um, and usually are part of a larger what's called national union or international union. Uh, you know, so you have the hotel workers. They have a, a union that in, in some of the big cities, you know, the local, the Hilton Hotel will be, you know, be, be a, a, a local uh, in the... Um, uh, in in the in this hotel workers, but then there's the general hotel workers, in the national union, uh, you know, which will have conventions and meetings and elect officers and try to bargain, uh, you know, for all hotel workers, at least those that are organized. So so we have we have thousands thousands and thousands of, of local unions, um, which are really totally run by the by the membership, you, you know, and then you have about probably a hundred. Uh, sort of national unions. Some are are big and important, like the uh, Teamsters or the uh, te- school teachers, uh, or you know, or the United Food and Commercial Workers. Uh, and others are very very small, um, uh, and you know, with only a, you know a few thousand workers. Okay, and, and so what other aspects besides unions? Are you looking at in labor study, uh, labor, the history of labor? Good question. Very good question. Well, all uh, uh, people who study labor have to study capitalism, right? You can't study one without the other. You know, uh, you have to study um, what's the, the, or business. You know, or what do you want to call? It? You have to study corporations, companies, managers, capitalism. And we find that the t- this is the terrain, you know, uh, of, of struggle, as it were. Uh, 50 or 100 years ago, back in the Blair Mountain days, um, the, the assumption was that uh, we were going to have really big corporations that would be kind of like General Motors or U.S. Steel or, you know, a big or, or a collection of coal mines in, under one 
uh, you know, under one company. And then uh, the liberal reformers thought, okay, then you have a union. Uh, the all the all the workers in that company, in General Motors, that had three or four hundred thousand members uh, of auto workers. They would all get together in one union, and then they'd bargain with with General Motors. And that worked for a while. We did have that for a while from the '30s and '40s and '50s. The United Automobile Workers is one of the biggest unions in the country, a very progressive union, and it bargained with General Motors or. Chrysler or Ford, these are, you know, but what's happened in the last 40 or 40 or odd years, 50 years is that these big corporations, there are many big corporations still, of course, but they've, they've tended to sort of transform themselves. They've disaggregated themselves. So if you're, if you're a company, uh, say, well, let's say, let's say you're Apple, you know, do you have an Apple? Do you have a computer there called Apple on your desk there? I bet you do, right? Do you have it there? No, I have a fo- I have a phone. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah, I've got a okay. phone. I got an you Apple got your phone. I got I got my okay. Here it is. Here, here they go. Yeah. Okay, you got that. You got that. <laughs> we all have that, right? Yeah, I got. It. All right, where it. was that made? It. All right, it's got um, Apple on the back. It's got a little Apple on the. Okay, it's it's an Apple. I bought it from Apple. All right, I did. But where was it made? And who made it? It's made in China by slaves. That's right. Made in China by Foxconn. Now, Foxconn yeah. is a company in China which makes these makes the, the, the Apple phones and the Apple uh, computers. And it employs a million workers. Uh, uh, it is not owned by Apple. It's not owned by Apple. It's a supplier to Apple. Apple has a tremendous influence on how Foxconn functions. It determines the products it will produce, the, the, the costs. You know, it, it has a, it does, does a lot, but but Apple. When you think, of, you know, Apple is is selling stuff. It's designing stuff. It, it it creates apps, but the actual manufacturer is in China. It'd be as if, you know, uh, General Motors didn't make any cars, and all the cars are made by some other company. Um, so that we you know we call that a supply chain or fissured employment, and that's going on all the time. And so you. Go Go down to when was the last time you had a had a hamburger at uh, at Burger King or McDonald's? Did you? Well, I did. I have one. I, I, I confess I like them. Okay, when I walk in there and I buy that hamburger, did I buy it from McDonald's? It says McDonald's on the front uh, outside. It says McDonald's. Did I buy? No, I didn't buy it from McDonald's. I bought it from a McDonald's franchiser, franchisee. Okay, and the the the, the, the this guy, somebody um, he owned he owned the building. Uh, he 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 employed the workers. Uh, it was a separate legal entity from McDonald's, which is headquartered in, in Chicago and which, you know, owns the owns the, the, the copyright and owns the symbols. But I bought in it the from land. Joe Schmo. I don't know who I don't know who owned this little local local by local McDonald's. It, so so if I'm a worker at McDonald's and I'm pissed off and I and I get together with all my other people and I say let's have a let's have, let's form a union and, and, and ask for more money, uh, the okay, who's your boss? Who's the boss? That's the question. It's not McDonald's in Chicago, which has all the money. It's the local guy who owns the, the, the franchisee. Well, he may be barely making it. In fact, he probably, you know, and if you ask for a dollar more an hour, uh, he might go bankrupt. And so it's because that, you know, McDonald's in Chicago, the, the company that owns uh, 30,000 store or, or has or, or sort of not, doesn't own them, but but really controls 30,000 stores and makes up billions every year. They are not the legal entity. So that we call that fissured employment. So that's the changing capitalism. And it makes it much more difficult for workers to to organize. <coughs> it's, you know, uh, and and we and the people who created the the labor law in the 1930s, they didn't sort of think about that. And they, they couldn't see it. So, but now we face that. What are we going to do about that? So, uh, for example, it's one of the big uh, fights taking place right now is to force McDonald's in Chicago, the, the big company, to be a joint employer with the local franchisee, you know, in wherever it is. Uh, and and that's now in the courts and in the Congress, and it's a big controversy because McDonald's wants to say, not our problem, you know, not not my problem. What what what's going on in, in some little store? So those are some of the issues, and I could go on and on about that. Uh, oh, uh, this I, is you know. this is absolutely this is absolutely fascinating. There's two things that I. I want to bring up the the first one is so I don't forget it. Um, do we know if the franchisee 
is in favor of McDonald's um, coming on as a co-employer. So that's number one. Yeah. And then the other one is like the sheer brilliance of that scheme <laughs> by McDonald's. It's, it's fucking amazing. Like it's, it's hard for me to think because McDonald's, the secret to them is like, and I don't know if it's still this way, but when it was getting built, they were, it's a real estate company because they owned yeah. the land. Sometimes, yeah. It's yeah. So they're the biggest yeah. real, yeah. They're the yeah. biggest real, like they have the most real estate, I think, of any of any company or, yeah. or close. Yeah. I don't know, maybe Berkshire Hathaway, uh, old Warren Buffett might be the, the, the one, but I'm, I'm curious to get your... To yeah. to find out is the franchise is the franchisee in favor of them <clears throat> becoming a co them becoming a co employer yeah uh, yeah sometimes yes sometimes they are um, because some, the franchisees they feel oppressed as well often and the franchisees they form their own associations and sometimes have have taken you know the McDonald's to court and whatnot and and so sometimes they do I, I can't say they always do but sometimes they do um, I remember once uh, when I fir- sort of first read realized what was going on. I walked into some fast food uh, joint and it was messy. It was messy. And I looked, you know, kind of stuff was lying around. And I and I sort of went up to the manager on our tour. I said, Why, what's, what's going on here? Why is this so messy? And he said, um, well, I'm really pissed off at, I think it was Burger King. I'm really pissed off at, at the regional manager and the, and the whole, because they, they aren't giving me enough of a budget to hire la- the labor that I want. Um, they're, they're, so therefore, I can't hire people to clean up the place. So I've decided to let it get messy, and the next time they come over and inspect, I'll just tell them, the reason this looks so lousy is because you will not give me the budget, you know? So there was that conflict between the, the, the kind of the manager of that franchisee, franchise and the, and, the, and the big, but you know, I can replicate this uh, uh, t- tons of times. You go into a day's in. Are you actually at a day's in? No, you're at a franchise Z and but you know which is which is that control it's controlled but not legally responsible or you can you can find this in a, in, a, in in tons and tons of other kind of kind of enterprises and of course the most egregious example today is Uber and Lyft because these companies are claiming that their drivers are independent contractors, i.e., not mm-hmm. workers. They can and, and and if they're independent contractors, they can't form unions. They don't get social security. Uh, their wages are not set by minimum wage laws. And and this is a huge fight everywhere. Uber and Lyft and DoorDash, for that matter, you know, uh, exists. So you probably you know, uh, next time you go on an Uber. Uh, the, the the driver, your driver, will is not a worker. He's not an employee in the law for for Uber. He's a independent contractor. Yeah, I did know that, and uh, I I get the, I've always gotten the sense that Uber used to be. I, I, now we're just on a personal rant here. I I used to think it was so cheap and so awesome. <laughs> It's honestly cheaper now for the listeners. A little, little life pro tip: it might be cheaper to just rent a car. Cause it's 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 outrageous now. I feel like Uber is just it's 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 outrageous. I've just rented cars, but sorry, that's a personal tangent. I'm sorry, we'll get back on top on topic. <laughs> but so I did. I was aware of the Uber thing. Now I want to kind of get like kind of focus on the the Starbucks issue that's going on. Starbucks, the difference between them and McDonald's is they are not a franchise. That's right. And so yeah, that's, they're yes. kind of on. They're on the fucking hook right now. Like yeah, they're they're screwed. Right. How is this? How is this story? How is this progressing? I, I, that's all. I well, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good question. Uh, I mean, Starbucks. Uh, yes, that's right. They they didn't franchisee franchise all their little a lot of the stores. I, I will make one point though. Next time you go to an airport and you and the, and you mm. buy a cup of coffee from Starbucks, or you go to a hotel. Uh, or your grocery store? Have you? Uh, is there a Starbucks? In your, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's some to say. Yeah. Okay. Those are um, what do they call them? Those are, are kiosks. They're called kiosks. They look like regular Starbucks stores, and there the employees are not employed by Starbucks. They're employed, they're employed by, by Safeway. Or that's whatever. right. That's right. And yeah. they're unionized often. If, if the Safeway is unionized, they're unionized. So, so the Starbucks is going on about, oh, if we unionize, if they unionize all everyone's this sort of wonderful, warm, cozy culture of Starbucks, we were destroyed. Well, you, there are thousands of, of, of union baristas in, employed in, uh, in in Safeway or Ralph's or or uh, some of your local airport or your local hotel or wherever it is. And, 
and, and the coffee is pretty good and, and the atmosphere is fine too. So anyway, but 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 one reason that Starbucks didn't franchise these is they, they 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 wanted to sort of they wanted to sort of have be distinctive, you know. So they 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 and and Starbucks did hire a kind of you know college kids, you know, more than McDonald's would. Uh, they hired you know they were they were kind of LGBTQ friendly, uh, etc. Um, well, this was this is precisely the the strata of of young workers who are today very much in motion. I mean, I think they feel betrayed by employers during the pandemic. You know, they they I think they feel that uh, you know maybe they that the co- the college education they've gotten you know hasn't you know paid off, and uh, so you you now have a, a kind of social movement at Starbucks. Uh, and you know, I think there are more than 200 of these stores which have gone through the regular, you know, election process run by the National Labor Relations Board, and they have um, voted in some cases overwhelmingly to form a union. But that's not the end of the story, unfortunately, because. Oh. Uh, yeah, can I continue on? Or? Oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just gonna. I wanted to kind of add to what you were saying. I used to work for oh, Starbucks sure. and I'm, I'm actually part of a, um, like I, I experienced all of the things that the union has talked about with the just continually cutting labor. Like I was there, uh, I was there until the pandemic started and then I was laid off and leading up to that, uh, in the previous fall, there were so many times, like everything was kind of going well. And then just out of nowhere, they kneecapped our labor. Uh, to where we could only have we would have like seven people on the floor at a time Mm -hmm. to then we went to having like three if we were lucky Um, and it they just said that we weren't earning it and then literally a week later they uh, a week later they came out uh, with a press release saying that uh, Kevin Johnson the CEO had gotten like a 22 million dollar bonus and just all of those things and there's actually uh, also too it was just settled uh, it's uh, Fredrickson versus Starbucks, a, a class action lawsuit that uh, a lot of people signed on to about uh, uh, people not being given promotions that they were promised or being discriminated against for some sort of minority status or whatever for that. And that's already been settled. Hmm. Yeah, let me just mention one thing. So I actually, um, if you... If you work for... One of the things that Starbucks claims that's good is they say, oh... If you work, you know, you get health insurance, okay? If you work, and and or we, you know, we you can take these free college courses or or something like that, and and basically this is this is you have to work twenty hours a week, uh, f- you know, to to qualify for these things. Now, one of the here's one of the things about the boss, and about individualism. The boss, the manager at every Starbucks. I mean, this is not some distant manager. This is a manager who knows you. They can determine whether or not, and this is the most important power they have, they can determine whether you work 20 hours a week or not. And if they cut your hours to below 20 hours, so you don't, it's not just a question of losing some pay. It's also you're no longer eligible for health insurance. Mm-hmm. And that was pay. the funny thing that always happened is that That's whenever right. it was coming up for the quarterly review for uh, insurance right. status, suddenly That's everybody right. had trouble getting hours. That's right. At a unionized, in one of those Starbucks at Safeway, and I looked at the contract and talked to the union guys, you are guaranteed 20 hours a week. You're guaranteed it. It's in the contract. It's a violation of the contract. So, I mean, I just have no, it's, it's Starbucks, despite all its warm and fuzzy, uh, 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 you know, and, and, and kind of culturally uh, you know avant-garde nature it's a fucking authoritarian workplace and you know and, <laughs> yes. and, and 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 that does not lead to individualism it leads to cowering and conformity and the worst kind of oppression so i to, so all of these uh, these these workers are are trying to 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 be able to be free to express themselves and i think they and they, they're finding they have to do that through collective action now unfortunately Starbucks has a lot of resources on its on its side. They aren't just money. It has lots of money too. The labor law is rotten. It's terrible. It doesn't it, it cannot force Starbucks to negotiate 
a contract with each of those 200 stores that have actually formally voted and been certified with a union. In fact, Starbucks, it's unquestionably the case that their strategy is delay, 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 put it off, stonewall, etc. And given the fact that late, the turnover at Starbucks is, I don't know, probably 100% a year, right? You know, oh, let's wait a year and know what will be left. I've know? been gone from Starbucks. After I was gone from uh, Starbucks for maybe like eight months, the entire store, I think except yeah. for maybe three people, had turned over. Yeah. They want that. They want that. The idea of having a career, the other difference between a unionized Starbucks and a, and a Safeway and a other is that you can have a career if you work at a unionized place. By a career, I mean you start off, the starting wage is still pretty low, but you, but you know you know that you every year you'll be there, the, the, the labor turnover is not so great, you'll get a wage increase, you'll get a promotion, and after 20 years you'll be making enough money to, you know, to, 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 have, to pay a mortgage, to have health insurance, to have retirement. At Starbucks... I guarantee, I guarantee, and and at McDonald's and 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 Walmart, they want turnover. They want it. They want it. They don't want anyone. They don't want anyone retiring from there. <laughs> you know, they want they want turnover. And that's and that that's that's a recipe for social uh, chaos and disruption. I mean, if if no one has a permanent job, well, it may be exciting for a few years when you're 18 years old. But by the time you you have a uh, you know a spouse, a mortgage, and a dog, and, and a car payment, you want something predictable. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like, what are what other types of labor disputes are going on in the United States right now that maybe aren't a part of the the narrative that's going on in the news media cycle? Yeah. Well, okay. Um, let's see. Well, uh, what's this? well, lots of lots of things are happening. Uh, uh, well, I, well, I mean, many of them are are kind of. Again, organizing. That is the big, the big um, uh, uh, problem confronting, well, the union movement certainly, and I would say working people in general is that uh, the resistance to forming new unions in new industries has been enormous, and therefore the union movement has in fact shrunk dramatically. And so the, the the most important thing is organizing. And so we see that now at Amazon. Uh, we see that at Delta Airlines, they're trying to organize stewardesses. We see that uh, in some of the auto, the, the Japanese run auto plants, which, which are not organized. We see that in lots and lots of places. We see it in, uh, re actually the interesting thing is retail. Retail, again, young people, lots of turnover, um, uh, kind of people would go in there with the, the expectation of, of not creating a career. Now we see in retail from everything from Apple stores to REI stores to uh, um, uh, to um, uh, uh, you know other kind of retail outlets, a, a kind of an organi organizing impulse is taking place, and that's a, that's a new thing. That that is a new thing. Um, and the other thing, by the yeah. way, is is in 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 kind of. Uh, categories of workers which we thought of as as you know it, nah, they, they were they were kind of uh, I don't know uh, uh, like museum people or or journalists or or teachers of various sorts or 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 uh, 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 publishing people you know you, you you know talk about uh, you know they were thought no they aren't interested in unionism well now there's a big impulse uh, that's that, that's happening so that's one thing kind of just organizing I want to emphasize that the other thing is just raising wages uh, <coughs> it used to be oh fifteen dollar you've heard of the campaign for fifteen dollars right well that should really be thirty dollars yeah. now. Uh, <laughs> to be thirty bucks, uh, because fifteen bucks isn't what it used to be. And uh, I'll make a prediction right now. Um, Eleven months from now, the largest strike in American his in American history for the last fifty years is going to take place. It's going to take place uh, at in uh, at United Parcel Service, where three hundred and 25,000 workers who are organized by the Teamsters, and the Teamsters have just had a reform leadership um, taken over, uh, they will go on strike at UPS uh, for higher wages and better conditions, and, 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 they, and, the, and they will, it will be a, the kind of strike we used to have 50, 60 years ago. That is a strike that is clearly going to set the pattern 
for American wages and working conditions for, for many, many hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of people, other, other people. Um, and this is going to happen. It's going to happen on July 1, 2023, when the current contract expires, because uh, these UPS worker people, they're, they're very busy, you know, <laughs> you know, you have to buy anything from, yeah. uh, right? Yeah. The, you, yeah. the, and they got a lot of work. Uh, but the wages have lagged, and there's going to be a huge, gigantic strike. And it's going to mean that um, FedEx, which is non-union, is going to be watching very closely. And I guarantee you, it, when UPS wins, and I think the workers will win at UPS, FedEx will instantly raise its wages as well. And that means that all everyone in the whole, this whole giant logistics industry, from the warehouses to the truck drivers, we're going to have a we're going to have a titanic struggle in one, in eleven. Months. Months. I will make for you right now. It's not Blair Mountain. Shit. It won't be Blair Mountain, but it'll be it'll be big. Okay. It'll be big. And I and I, I I you remember remember what I said? Oh, dude, dude, dude! I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a reminder on my calendar, and I'll be reaching July out 1, to you. July one, two thousand This strike, this will not Just, be settled because the workers are ready to go. There's a reform leadership. There's radicals in in the Teamsters Union. Uh, the Teamsters, they, for good reason, they have a bad reputation. They've they've been some terrible things, but right now it's led by, Jimmy Hoffa, baby, led by reformers. And there's going to be this Titanic strike. I guarantee it. <laughs> Holy smokes! Have you got you got any inside sources? Don't reveal them here. But like, uh, you, you, are you talking to someone they're on the inside? Yes, they're, re they're preparing for it right now. They're preparing for this strike right now. Right now. So you not not the you not the not the parcel United States Post. No, 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 no. The, you know, you know, UPS like, United United Parcel Service. That's yeah, it's yeah. the private firm. They would the, you know the brown yeah, trucks, yeah, yeah, the brown, yeah. you know brown uniforms. Brown brown yeah. trucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I just wanted to make yeah. sure we're we're clear yeah. there. That is fascinating. So then that's going to affect Fed. What about Amazon though? Because Amazon is definitely getting into the logistics right, game as well. Right, this right. is an area that I'm right, very right. like they are they are those little yeah you reason. see those trucks running around with the low Amazon. Well, again, once again that's fissured employment. Those are independent contractors. Those are not actually. Again, they have they have the Amazon uniform. They have the Amazon truck. Uh, by the way, the same is true with FedEx. Fed, the, all those FedEx guys running around. The, the, those are they're independent contractors. They the the, the 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 they they have to paint their trucks exactly the way FedEx wants. But they are they are legally considered independent contractors. It's a scam. It's a it's a, it's a, it's a uh, it's like a, nothing more than a than a than a carnival scam where they they're denied social security, they're denied unemployment insurance, they're denied uh, health uh, uh, health insurance, but you know because oh we're, oh you're an independent contractor. Well, they 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 are every every minute of their of their work life is controlled by FedEx. It's that's what that's what it's, that's that's what that's one of the big problems facing labor. The this this really effort to to legally deconstruct what is a worker you know i but okay i do i do i think i might depart somewhere because i feel like i i met someone years ago and this could be complete bullshit but i think you can start a little like logistics company delivering amazon like doing D delivering Amazon packages and whatnot, like they'll pay you, right? So you could have, you could buy right. a, a few sprinter vans, hire a few guys, right. or maybe not, maybe you just do it yourself. But let's say you hire a few guys, right? And and you you make sure that the contracts negotiated favorably, and you have your you're in business for yourself. And then as a employer, I think because of Obamacare, you have to have insurance if you have workers. So like that's not that's if you have if you have your own business and you're delivering for Amazon, like. It's not, let's say even if you are an independent con a contractor, wouldn't it be at the behest of the individual to, to you know, if you're, ma if you're making, you know, decent coin, right, you could pay, technically pay for insurance or, or get something, right, or to get a health savings account and then invest that. But <clears throat> let's say you don't do that, but get a health, get a health savings account. You, you have a rainy day. Like, don't you think that there, there should be maybe a, a little bit of a, of responsibility on the individual. No, I mean, I, no. I, I, the reason I'm, is no, <laughs> no. You're wrong. I love it. No, right. no. And believe. the reason yeah, is okay. that who, who's setting who's, who's setting why. the rates? Who's determining how much you, the, the, this person gets paid for every pa for every every package that's, that's delivered? And, they, and he ha they have to deliver, uh, and, and the quota. For, no, the the crucial things about that business are entirely determined by Amazon and not by the individual. The only thing the individual can do is exploit themselves 
or their workers. And by self-exploitation, a lot of that, that means, you know, working 14 hours a day and making below minimum wage, which is what can happen when you when, when they aren't paying enough. So the answer is no. And in fact, the but California not- legislature has uh, passed AB5, a law which made that il- everything you just described illegal. OK, now these companies are so- fighting back, but, uh, you know, they don't like it because they want to exploit their workers. Uh, but it's illegal. And uh, according to the in California. And so, you, you know, if if in other words, if it if it squawks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, it's a duck. In other words, it's an employer. If the employer controls what, what you make, you know, what your, your schedule, you know, what kind of uniform you have, it's an employer. They may call you an independent contractor. They may call you an entrepreneur. They may put uh, advertisements on TV about how happy you are, but you're a worker and they're the employer. And the answer is uh, that, that, that we shouldn't fall for that bullshit. I, I I don't know enough about this. I don't I don't know if you have to buy if you have to buy the Sprinter van. Do. I don't understand what kind of contract you're signing with them or how much they're paying. I don't know if they're covering your fuel. I don't know if that's I don't know enough about this to to bring forth any counterpoints um, to your opinion. I'll default to you. I do. I should have maybe looked into this because I, well, I didn't know we were going to get here, but I am fascinated because I, I, I feel like it's a good opportunity, you know, maybe to to make a little extra coin. I, I don't I, I feel like I don't know. I, I don't know. I need to. I, I don't know. I'm going to just default it. I don't know. I'll defer to you. What's up? John? Um, well, Nelson, I was wondering um, what what are your thoughts on the uh, the United States uh, railroad strikes that just didn't happen because the executive branch uh, interfered and basically told them you're too valuable, you don't have rights. Um, yeah, I would love I, to hear, I, I hear your know, thoughts on that. I don't know a lot that. about it. I do know the, the general principle here is that railroad strikes, uh, in particular, really going back 150 years, really when railroads were the absolute key to everything, commerce in America, they, they, they're they covered by a different kind of labor law than, than lots of other people. And the and under this law, the Railroad Labor Act, I think it's called, uh, the government can intervene. In other words, it can say, no, you can't go on strike, <laughs> uh, which is not true <laughs> in other places. But they can say that because railroads are deemed absolutely crucial to commerce. Uh, there's a kind of then kind of arbitration of a sort and, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 some sort of a, a compromise is reached. But that that's happened a lot over the last hundred years. I, I have to say, I do not know the the detail of this most recent um, intervention, but that that's that's been going on for a, more than a hundred years. Mm. What, what we can do is, John, if you wouldn't mind, send him. John, John's a he's a freaking wizard, so he can send you some. some yeah, I'll send I'll send you links with what podcast, I have. So we can we can chat on off offline about that. But that is something that is that I think that's something that's that's super interesting. I, I just I the thing that's blown my mind so far during this po- is is the shakeup of the logistic industry the the amount of disruption that 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 the teamsters and ups would have and and having a background in logistics uh, and actually technically being um I'm technically being a ups employee I work for a brokerage firm uh, Kite logistics um and that company was awesome, right? You, you got stock options, discounted stock. It, it, it was incredible, but I wasn't a driver. And they definitely, there were a lot of Teamster loads, like especially like during peak season, which is uh, anywhere from, I'm going to just say November till the after the first of the new year, where everyone, given the rise of e-commerce, they're just overloaded, right, with, with delivering packages. Like that strike, if they... I can't believe I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> if they really wanted yeah. to be effective, you you maybe if you could wait until like because you give them, if you 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 said July July first or July twenty July first. Okay, July first, like that that gives the company enough time to start sweating, because once you hit September or even you know October. I feel like they're going to settle for whatever you want. I don't think the strike would go on that long, but if people aren't getting their packages during that time, my during Christmas, oh my goodness, what an interesting thing. There's a, there's some stock tips on, on the on the Rick's Mind podcast. Short UPS stock. You heard it here for no. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. This isn't financial advice, but um, that's dude. That's gonna be wild to see. I I just. 
the, the logistic the logistics industry is kind of in it's, it's kind of in a downturn right now. But for a while, it was in shambles. But to see a big player like that kind of go out. I don't know what would happen. I know you're, yeah, right. Logistics is big. I mean, it, it's much bigger than it used to be, partly because sort of China and, and Central America. I mean, where where are the factories? Well, they're they're often in China and Central America, and you have to get the stuff here, and uh, that's that's part of the, what's that's part of what's going on here. And uh, but but let me put that in perspective to, for you. UPS is the most asset rich. When I say asset, I mean in terms of equipment mm-hmm. company on the mm-hmm. planet. Like hands mm. down, all the okay. trucks, rail cars, sure. airplanes. Uh, you know, like it, airplanes. Any if if for example, if if they have deals with the railroad to where if they have a UPS like kind of train train cars coming through, like some of the railroads will divert their like standard loads off the track so mm. they can get through. Like that's a lot mm. of power. So it's going to be interesting to mm. see how this sh- shakes 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 up. It's fascinating. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know. You're right. Yeah, yeah. And this this is going to be a return to the past because we have had strikes like this before. I mean, what is it? Jimmy Hoffa um, did he did he go before Congress and 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 that's when he said, "You don't know who I am, but I'm one of the most powerful men on on earth." And all the trucks are rolling. They they were rolling half speed like that. That's going to be that level of of crazy of chaos. Well, we we, we, we had, you know 60s, I mean was, you know big. Uh, well, again, years ago, we, we you know we had like a big auto strike would you know shut down a, the biggest industry in the country or or a steel strike you know that this was this was this is 50 60 70 years ago we, we haven't had big strikes like that recently the, the number of strikes are very uh, it just makes this clear to your listeners um the number of strikes in america and including this year uh, is very, many many times smaller than we used to have three or four decades ago. I mean, just make that clear. It's, it's, uh, you know, we, we could go on about strike waves and all, all the, but just if you just look at one of those charts or one of those graphs, it's just uh, no comparison whatsoever. So, um, uh, and that's because, uh, uh, the, well, there were more, there were more unionists then, but also the, the unions had more power and they had, they weren't afraid to strike. Many unions still are afraid to strike because they're afraid that if they do, they'll be destroyed. And if you have a company that has 28 different businesses and and only one of them goes on strike, well, that's not going to be very effective. Yeah, but yeah, no, that's that's true. You you've got to do. Where 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 is the healthcare? Like, what's going on? I know there's a lot of union. I think there's quite a few unions in the healthcare system. But part of me also thinks that's bullshit. I, I kind of feel like that might be a decent area <laughs> to put unions in. I don't know. It's a mixed, um, it's a mixed bag. In, um, don't, don't hate me. There's a, just, there, yeah, yeah, most, most people who work in the, the big, I mean, again, hospitals and the whole healthcare sector is, is, you know, is much, much bigger today than it was 50 years ago. So just lots more employment. Um, there's a very good, good study of Pittsburgh that came out. You know, what's the biggest employer in Pittsburgh to these days? It's not uh, U.S. Steel, that's for sure. It's the uh, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, the big kind of uh, mega hospital chain that, that, that's there. Um, in fact, they, the U.S. Steel Building, <laughs> which was built in 1970, it's now, I think it's called, what's it called? Uh, uh, anyway, Greater Pittsburgh, you know, Health. health you know, John will right? pull that up. They, you know. So, um, uh, and, and, and most of, health, uh, there are some strong unions in uh, um, the health sector, the nurses are becoming strong uh, in California. The Kaiser system is, which is a very big um, uh, healthcare system, is, is a lot of unions there in New York, New York State, uh, Illinois as well. Um, but it's, uh, but not the South, you know, and 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 not all the and nursing homes, nursing homes which are very labor intensive and. And very intimate. I mean, you know, when your relative is in a nursing home, you want good care. Well, they they employ lots of low wage, uh, uh, you know, uh, people there, and 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 not enough of them. And so the care is often terrible. So anyway, healthcare is um, uh, is is a is a is a kind of a it's it's a it's an area for where a lot of a lot of potential uh, conflict is going on and uh, and again there's kind of well you know the nurses for example say we want you know um one of the main things the nurses want is not more money but they want you know uh to 
to make sure what's it called staffing ratios. They they don't want to take care of too many patients because it it, it it gives them a nervous breakdown and the patients may may get ill and die. So they want staffing ratios, and that's a huge fight, uh, much even more so than money. Yeah, and I I think that you know unions are all labor is an interesting topic. It's it's very it's very divisive it's it's but it's very important and i don't know what any of the right answers are there's 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 one part of me that's like very pro union and there's another part of me that's 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 anti for whatever reason right and i don't know this is a this is an area that i'm not you know i'm not a member of a union but i'm in you know i'm kind of in the tech industry right now and i've I have it a lot better than I think a lot of people. You know, I'm able to work from home. I've got flexible hours. I, I, you know, it's 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 a dream, but not everyone is in that position, and not all of these companies, despite the the, despite the pandering to all the being a scars for causes. Like at the end of the day, they're going to make fucking money, and they don't care about you. Like they would replace you in five minutes, and I think that that's important to remember in these days. I do want to be respectful of your time and I want you right now I understand it's my understanding you've got a bunch of current projects going on so if you kind of you know you know uh drop yourself a line do a little little uh, free advertising here I'd be, I'll that'd do be that. fantastic Thank you very much. Nelson All right yeah yeah no what what uh, what I just books finished are you the book on, on the currently the the economic policies of the Clinton administration uh, and then uh, I'm going to write another book on, uh, well, I think it might be called Why Unions Matter. And, 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 and the, the audience for this <laughs> will it. be, in my mind, will be the 22-year-old barista at Starbucks. And so this is going to be 18? Is it 18 books now that know, you've written? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. And where can people buy? Where can uh, people the, buy your work? Well, you, they, well I mean, Amazon. Make? I'm not against buying. Uh, buying. You go to Amazon. It's all listed there. You can buy them there. Or you can buy them a lot of them in your local bookstore. Uh, no, I'm not against. Uh, I'm not for boycotting uh, Amazon until we, until the time comes. So go ahead and buy it. Buy it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Just put my name in. Put my name into Amazon. So <laughs> Nelson Lichtenstein. We'll, we'll we'll drop a link in the show notes. Nelson, it's been a pleasure. I'm we you're coming back on the show. Your character. I love talking to you. And uh, you know, everyone listening, thanks for listening. Um, if you you know deem us worthy, please give us that five star rating on iTunes. Um, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the clips channel that which is new we're we're gaining a little bit of traction on youtube but um i, I support everyone that's listening to my voice uh come through um on spotify and on wherever you get your podcast and guess what we'll be back next week uh episode 100 is coming up and we gotta we gotta we got a doozy for you guys love you peace and love out